Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India, India's voice to the world. This is News R. I'm Mark Lin. Namaskar. It's an auspicious day of Holi, the festival of colors. Wishing everyone a bright and colorful Holi. Coming up in the next hour. The vibrant festival of color signifying the change of the season, victory over evil. Holi is celebrated with a splash of color and warm exchange of greetings across India and the world. Russia mourns the victims of the horrific Moscow Concert Hall terror attack. The national flag is lowered to half-mast on top of the Kremlin. Four suspects charged with terrorism sent to pre-trial custody till May 22. Doctors in South Korea up the ante. The medical professors now start resigning en masse. They are opposing a government decision to increase medical school admissions. India tells Pakistan to stop terror factories and to stop farcically claiming to champion human rights. The strongly worded rebuke came at the Inter-Parliamentary Union Assembly in Geneva. Holi, the festival of colour, from the young to the young at heart, people of all ages embrace this festival by immersing themselves in a kaleidoscope of colours and dancing to the rhythm of their hearts. Well, millions of Indians are celebrating Holi, Known as the Festival of Colours at home and abroad, the festival celebrates the beginning of spring and the victory of good over evil. The festival is characterised by its vibrant colours, gulal and customs that transcend mere festivity. It's a jubilant celebration of happiness. Holi is uh, celebrated in fact with diverse customs. In Barsana, in Latmar Holi, involves women playfully hitting men with sticks, while Poolanwali Holi in Vrindavan sees devotees showered with flowers. And India's financial capital, Mumbai, celebrates Holi with great fervor. Uh, our correspondent, Shama Mishra, caught up with uh, and she brought us the mood over there. Well, it's that time of the year when the entire nation is drenched in colors. Yes, it's the festival of Holi and we are here in Mumbai. And Mumbai is no less when it comes to celebrating in a traditional manner. You can see over here that senior citizens, people, everyone, you are here and they're celebrating in a very traditional way. Here, uh, he's having flower petals, dried gulal. All this is used not to waste water and to attract other people from other religions as well. So communal harmony is also being celebrated over here. How is your Holi going? My Holi is going excellent. Goa Wala Sar has done a lot of, a lot of efforts to get us out here. And the function is awesome and Chaturvedi Sar always helps us for all over here. The function is really very nice and it really entitles a whole show for the day. Here the traditional uh, people from Braj, Braj, they've come here and they are doing the traditional Rasya. Here <laughs> बड़ा ही आनंद आता है ब्रज का दर्शन यहां हम इन लोगों को सबको कराते हैं बंबई वालों को और इसलिए वहां से हमको बुलाया जाता है Obviously, we cannot compare Mumbai's uh, Holi with Braj and Mathura, but yes, we are also having a good time over here, and that's what we are that's what we are hoping for the rest of the country, for the rest of the world, that they have a good time celebrating Holi too. Shama Mishra, DD India, Mumbai. Well, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh also celebrated Holi at his residence in New Delhi. Thank you. 
And on the occasion, Rajnath Singh extended wishes uh, for Holi to the whole country. He was speaking to DD India correspondent Akshay Dongre. Let's listen. The residents of India's Defence Minister, Mr. Rajnath Singh, where he every year holds a mega festival of Holi. And we have uh, Honourable Minister here, sir. Holi ka parv hai aaj. Kya sandesh desh ko dena chahenge? Bas Holi ke pavan par par samast desh vaasiyon ko meri hardik shubh kamna hai. Kal ma swayam leh mein ja kar apne saare teeno services ke javanon ke saath maine Holi kheli hai. Itna hi nahi balki paramilitary forces ke javanon ke saath adhikariyon ke saath bhi maine Holi kheli hai. और कल ही मैंने अपने सारे जवानों को जो देश की सीमा की सुरक्षा कर रहे हैं उनको हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं दी हैं और आज मैं पुनः उनको हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं दे सो वी जस्ट स्पोक विद द ऑनरेबल डिफेंस मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया मिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह हु होल्ड्स दिस मेगा फेस्टिवल सेलिब्रेशन हियर एट हिज रेसिडेंस इन न्यू डेली एंड एज यू कैन सी अलॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव टर्न अप लाइक एवरी ईयर दे आर ऑल हियर टू सेलिब्रेट द फेस्टिवल फ्रॉम द रेसिडेंस ऑफ द डिफेंस मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया विद कैमरा पर्सन सौरभ अंक्ष डूंगरे डी डी इंडिया Well, let's take a look at uh, India's most colourful tradition, which marks the arrival of spring. It's associated with happiness, vibrant colours, Holi. Sakal Bhatt takes us right into the celebration and its message. It's again the time of the year marked by riot of colors, vibrant splash of different hues and shades across the Indian subcontinent. The holy festivities in India. Holi, one of the popular festivals of Hindus of India, also famous as Festival of Colors, symbolizes love. arrival of spring with abundant colors invocation of good harvest season while bidding adieu to winter season the legend signifies holi as a celebration of eternal and divine love between hindu deities radha and krishna additionally the day signifies the triumph of good over evil as well Indian cities like Mathura, Vrindavan, Barsana and Nandgaon hold great significance in Hindu mythology as these places are associated with the life and times of Lord Krishna. The flavor of Holi here is world famous as it attracts teeming tourists the world over. The Holi originated and is predominantly celebrated in the Indian subcontinent but over the years it has spread to other regions of Asia and beyond through the Indian diaspora. Holi festivities are also common in some Caribbean communities of Indian origin such as Trinidad, Tobago, Mauritius, Fiji, South Africa, Guyana among others. Cutting across the cultural spectrum and age groups in diverse democracy like India, holy celebrations are also about fun banter, smearing special color powder, traditionally called gulal or abir on each other and feasting on specially prepared holy delicacies. Holi festival also has a religious tinge symbolically signified by the legend of Holika. The night before Holi, bonfires are lit in a ceremony known as Holika Dahan or burning of Holika. In tandem with vibrance of India's democracy, Holi ushers in with it the joy, the vibrance, the pomp and fervor, the grandeur, marking new beginnings with the onset of spring season. With Aarti Rana, Sakal Bhatt for DD India. Beautiful smiles there. Now, uh, the President of India, Draupadi Murmu, extended her holy greetings to the nation. In a message, the president said, "On the auspicious occasion of Holi, I extend my greetings and best wishes to all Indians living in India and abroad. Holi is a vibrant and joyous festival which infuses hope and enthusiasm into our lives. Various colors of Holi symbolize the diversity of our country. This festival promotes the feelings of love, unity, and brotherhood among the people. This festival also inspires us to strengthen our cultural heritage. May this festival of color." 
bring happiness in everyone's life and motivate all of us to work towards nation building with new zeal. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extended greetings to the people of the country on the occasion of Holi. In a post written in Hindi on X, the Prime Minister said, wishing my family members a plethora of heartfelt holy greetings. May this festival, adorned with colors of affection and goodwill, bring new energy and enthusiasm into your lives. And foreign nationals too uh, have enjoyed the festival of colors in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. DD India's uh, correspondent Ajay Mishra caught up with some Japanese nationals uh, celebrating Holi in Vrindavan in Mathura. Right now we are in Vrindavan to celebrate this beautiful uh, festival of color and uh, there are may, uh, many uh, uh, friends from foreign land who have also uh, landed on, uh, on, the, uh, on this holy land of uh, Vrindavan. How do you feel being in India and uh, you know, uh, 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 experiencing this great festival? Oh, like I really love Foley. Uh, actually, I have been in India for actually in two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my actually first time coming to Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. It's holy in Vrindavan, especially so amazing. Right. And I really love this culture since I like, sub live in India. Okay. Yeah. So uh, can you also manage some Hindi because uh, your friend is also speaking, speaking Hindi. So you have learned some Hindi words? Some, some Hindi words? Uh -huh. Namaskar, my name is Kunda. Hai. Uh -huh. Kunda hai. Okay, so Kundan, uh, uh, what's the feeling like and uh, how are your friends enjoying with you? I like very much. Happy Ori. Thank you. We have also, uh, you know, friends from, you are also from Japan? Yeah, from Japan. So please uh, share your experience with us. Amazing. Okay. Good. Amazing in the words. Have you been in Vrindavan before? Uh, it's our first time. It is, your, it is your first time. Okay, great. So what are the memories that you, you want to, you know, bring back home uh, uh, in Japan? Oh, with a beautiful color. Uh -huh. Ooh. <laughs> um, good experience. Thank you. Yes. So you can see this, 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 this bright, uh, you know, the color of, uh, 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 you know, in Vrindavan. People are really enjoying and you can see the colors. Uh, this, this is really special. You have to come uh, to Vrindavan to actually feel uh, this, this, uh, this the journey of spirituality and, uh, and our vibrant colors uh, uh, during this uh, great uh, festival of colors in Vrindavan. With camera person Aniket Ajay Mishra, DD India, Sridham Vrindavan. And still to come here on DD India News R. Colorful holy celebrations in the small island nation of Cabo Verde in West Africa. East Africa's India Connect resonates as holy is celebrated in Uganda with fervor. The EU capital Brussels also witnesses a splash of color as holy celebrations bring people together. Information shapes our reality. One app stands out, helps you stay ahead of time. Introducing the DD India app, your gateway to a world of news right at your fingertips. Your most trusted source of news goes global, goes digital. Explore a world of options, top stories, live updates, in depth analysis, and more. Stay informed wherever you are. Real-time alerts keep you ahead of the curve always. The DD India app connecting you to the world one story at a time. Download now and explore the world of knowledge, insights and authentic information. You're watching DD India News R. I'm Mark Lynn. And now let's uh, go across to Vrindavan and uh, Ajay Mishra is joining us from there, from uh, the middle of all the celebrations. Ajay, the celebration in Vrindavan we know is legendary, but uh, so is the devotion. Give us a sense of the occasion. Uh, thanks, Mark. Happy, uh, happy hello to you uh, yes. from the land of uh, Vrindavan. We understand that uh, the spirituality is the core of uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the core feeling when you, uh, when you have to come to, uh, to Vrindavan to actually feel uh, uh, what is it all about. Uh, I have a friend from Fiji who have been living in Vrindavan since many years. Thanks very much. What's your name? Ramendra Singh. So, Ramendra, uh, how long have you been in Vrindavan? Uh, 
uh, this is my second time coming to Brindaban. Uh, I was here like uh, about uh, two years ago mm -hmm. uh, and spent uh, like three years with uh, Guruji. Right. So, spirituality, uh, how is your sadhana going and how? Uh, what's your feeling about the Holi? Uh, my sadhana is great and uh, I really enjoyed the, the Parikrama today with Guruji. Uh -huh. It was a lot of fun, <laughs> like playing with colors. So, Mark, uh, people do Parikrama of uh, Vrindavan, uh, which is a holy land, and it is very, it is considered very auspicious. You know that the Latmar Holi, Chadi Mar Holi, Laddu Mar Holi is very famous. I have uh, with me the Simran, who have come from uh, Mumbai to uh, celebrate the Holi here. Simran, first time? Yeah, first time. So, uh, how has been the experience so far? The experience was wonderful. I mean, I have never played Holi like this before. And, uh, like, in my, I mean, I, in my whole life, this is my first time I'm playing Holi in Vrindavan, and it's wonderful. The experience, the air, everything is so different, and I feel extremely close to God. It's it's a blessing, and I, I feel very lucky to be in Vrindavan during Holi. I think you were also part of Parikrama, where the uh, where Lord Krishna and Radha were dancing, and it was just mesmerizing to understand. But uh, 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 what are the memories that you want to share back home in Mumbai, and what what is the things that you will, you would like to share with the friends out there? I think uh, I, what I liked the most is everyone was equal, like everyone we met on the road, everyone celebrated Holi together. No one was afraid, no one was uh, differentiating, everyone were together celebrating this festival which I feel is extremely good and extremely special for Vrindavan. Yeah. Thanks Imran. So, uh, uh, Mark, it is all about, you know, breaking the shackles uh, in the society uh, to, to iron out all the differences and that's all the Holi, the festival of Holi is all about and uh, the, 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 the Vrindavan is very special for Holi because uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, the Holi is being celebrated in Vrindavan for almost 40 days. Today is almost okay. the last, last day. Tomorrow there will be a Horanga. It is, this is, again, this is very special uh, um, festival here in Dauji where, uh, 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 where, where the main male uh, uh, people, uh, you know, the males, uh, you know, put colors on the female and the female mm -hmm. torn off all the clothes and you will never see uh, this kind of uh, scene anywhere in the country. So I really have to come to Vrindavan and, and, and uh, see the difference, uh, 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 different part of, uh, you know, festivities in Barsana, in Gokul, in Mathura, in Vrindavan, as well as in uh, Dauji. Uh, a great festivity and I think people are uh, looking forward to the next year and, and uh, people out here, almost 4,000, yes. 5,000 people I have met they are looking forward again to the next year and they are promising themselves that they will come with the family next year to actually have a feeling and a, and a real experience uh, in Vrindavan. So, uh, you know, yes. people out here are, are really enjoying, but uh, the things are coming to, you know, close as of now. Yes, uh, Ajay, uh, uh, happy Holi to you. I'm sorry that I, I mean, I started without wishing you, but you know, uh, uh, people from all over the world, uh, they come to Mathura at this time of the year and you, we, we heard you speaking to some Japanese people. Uh, Ted, you know, you must have spoken to people, you, you did already sp also spoke to, uh, spoke to a person from Fiji just now. How special it is, is it yeah. for these people who come from far and wide? So, uh, you know, uh, the people who are actually originally from India they, uh, and now they are residing uh, in other parts of the world, maybe uh, in uh, USA or, uh, uh, or, or Fiji for that matter, um, they, are, uh, they are feeling like uh, back home and they are, uh, they are really missing these, uh, these colorful festivities uh, when they were uh, outside India. But now they are coming back uh, to actually feel and, and share the same experience. Those who are not part of India and are actually foreign, they are really appreciating the culture and colorful heritage of India. Uh, because, you know, uh, uh, so much of diversity, so much of colorfulness, so much of equality, as Simran just, uh, you know, described, uh, you cannot find on any other, uh, any other part of the world. So, yes, uh, the Vrindavan, especially uh, for Holi, is very special for foreigners. We know that uh, Skon uh, Temple, which is a great uh, place of, uh, you know, togetherness in many parts of the world. They have, uh, there are several temples uh, in, in many, uh, many, many parts of the world, and uh, it, it's a great connect. Uh, because this is the land of Krishna and Radha and Iskand also tries to, you know, unite the uh, devotees of Krishna and Radha all over the world and we understand that it's, it's a common thread that the people enjoy to find some kind of spirituality and, and calmness when they, when they arrive here on the land of uh, Vrindavan. It's really special. Uh, okay. what, whoever I have spoken to uh, with, the, uh, they, are, they are really looking, looking forward to come again uh, in Vrindavan to experience the same next year, maybe. Uh, you know, many, many years <laughs> right. uh, from, uh, from now, Mark. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, Ajay Mishra, for joining us uh, from Vrindavan.
And uh, moving on then, uh, a small island nation in the, in, uh, the west of Africa, uh, Cabo Verde, uh, has also uh, held uh, wonderful celebrations for Holi, colorful celebrations. India opened its embassy in Cabo Verde only nine months ago, and locals not only uh, have got drenched in the colors, but they've enjoyed Bollywood music. And it's not just Indians at home uh, in a festive mood. Well, millions of expats, uh, uh, they are celebrating Holi in different parts of the world with aplomb. Millions are gathering in parts of the world to uh, put on their best ethnic attire, to taste some of that home-cooked Indian food, and also, uh, of course, uh, to play with colors. Here's our correspondent, Ishan Garg, who was at an event in Brussels. Lots of colors, some thumping Bollywood music, and food to die for. That's the chief attraction that brought hundreds to this holy event in Brussels. We have food here every Sunday and on Holi we have some special delicacies. So as you can see, please are absolutely loving all of it. The colors are also evocative of a deeper emotion, the desire to passionately hold on to one's culture in a foreign land. Festivals like Holi give people a chance to feel at home and also meet other members of the community. That's especially true for young people who have recently moved to Belgium for studies or work. And when you tell them that this mandir is here for you, we are your family here, and you could see it's emotional when you feel that. So it is an emotional attachment with everyone. The community is at the heart of Brussels Mandir, a Hindu temple in the Belgian capital. For years, Indians in the city have pooled money to fund its operations. And on big festivals, it becomes the beating heart of their culture in the city. This place really feels like a microcosm of India. People from different parts of the country who may not have had the opportunity to celebrate Holi together have gathered here, outside India, in a rare melting pot of cultures. It's important for the organizers here to make the event inclusive, not only for expats from all walks of life, but also for Belgians looking to get a taste of India. Anyone who loves this culture, who loves the people here, are more than welcome. We welcome them. So whenever we see everyone, they are very comfortable, we are very comfortable, because they like the culture, they like, like what, what's happening here. And it's, it's very good for that, and we should encourage. We should encourage it with open arms. Expats here say events like these are a slice of home away from home and help them keep their traditions alive for the next generation. Ishan Kerg in Brussels, reporting for DD India. Well, the Indian Embassy in the United States uh, also celebrated Holi with great fervor, where several members of the Indian diaspora participated. And celebrations of Holi uh, have uh, begun in earnest across the world. In East Africa, the Indian community living in Uganda gathered for the Festival of Colors. Let's uh, look at uh, Leon Siyange's report from Uganda. A celebration of color done with glamour. The Indian community in Uganda gathered for the Holi Festival a day that signifies the triumph of good over evil and arrival of spring in India. It brings quite a bit of positivity in you. You know, any negativity which is within you, you just set it off. You know that, okay, now I'm going to start a new, it's going to be a new start for me. The Holy Festival has been celebrated for thousands of years. For Hirani Rajesh, bringing his young family is an opportunity to teach them about the holy culture. Children uh, should be like, uh, uh, know the, this culture because it is our religion. A culture with everything to be happy about. The celebration is not only about color. The people have gathered to sing and dance as well. The traditional delicacies add to the camaraderie. 
Thank you. Aupa Savjani says she has never missed a holy festival in her adult life. It is a significant part of her life. So it is one year, two festivals which is come more important to us. One is Holi, one is Diwali. Diwali has a fireworks, Holi has a colors. So we are enjoy as a colorful life of the full year. That's what we pray for other people also. Different Indian communities in Uganda will hold the celebrations until the first weekend of April. The enjoyment here is already fulfilling. We are really enjoying. We are enjoying a lot. It's been really fun because we've just come, but ever since like we've started, it's really fun. The organizers plan a bonfire to light up the festival. For the celebrants, this single day truly remains a recognition of the belief of new beginnings. Leon Senyange in Kampala, Uganda, reporting for DD India. In other stories now, India slammed Pakistan once again over its absurd remarks on Jammu and Kashmir. Speaking at the 148th session of the Interparliamentary Union Assembly in Geneva, the Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Harivanch, representing India, emphasized India's status as the largest democracy in the world, a model that many countries aspire to emulate. He criticized Pakistan's track record on democracy. Addressing Pakistan's claims on Jammu and Kashmir directly, Harivanch reaffirmed that the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are an integral part of India. And he highlighted the futility of rhetoric and propaganda in changing this undeniable fact. I take the floor to reject the preposterous comments made by Pakistan against my country. Lectures by a country which has an abysmal track record of democracy is laughable, to say the least. It would have been better if Pakistan did not undermine the importance of a platform like IPU by such absurd allegations and false narratives. As regards the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, they have been and will always remain an integral and inalienable part of India. No amount of rhetoric and propaganda from anyone can override this fact. Instead, Pakistan would be well advised to stop its terror factories that continue to launch countless cross-border terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir while farcically claiming to champion the cause of human rights. IPU members are well aware that Pakistan has an established history of harboring, aiding and actively supporting terrorists. The latest update now from the Moscow attack, a Russian court late on Sunday evening charged four men with acts of terrorism in connection with the March 22 deadly concert hall attack. Video showed all of them being marched blindfolded by masked police into the court. As per the court statement, two of them admitted to their guilt. All four are to be held in pre-trial detention until at least the 22nd of May. All were arrested hours after the four gunmen on Friday night had stormed the Crocus City Hall on the outskirts of Moscow and began firing on some estimated 6,000 people who were attending a rock concert. The attackers also set fire, which uh, engulfed the venue and uh, caused the collapse of the roof. The Russian authorities said 137 people were killed and more than 150 injured. And Russia on Sunday lowered its national flag on top of the Kremlin to half-mast as the country mourns the victims that were killed in the terrorist attack at the concert hall in the northwestern Moscow Oblast on Friday. The Red Square remains closed as Russian authorities shut down all access points to this iconic landmark in Moscow following the attack. Now still to come here on DD India News Hour. Young doctors on strike uh, in, South, in South Korea, they get uh, support from their professors who are beginning to resign from their positions, putting pressure on the government there. 37-year-old Simon Harris is set to become Ireland's youngest ever prime minister. Senegal's opposition claim early lead in the presidential election.
India that invents. India that innovates. India that excites. India that invites. Land of possibility. Teeming with opportunities. Watch India Ideas each Thursday, 8 p.m. only on DD India. Voice of a rising aspirational world. Stories of challenges, struggles and accomplishments. A world battling conflict, hunger and poverty. Embracing growth, development, science and technology. A voice of progress, a voice of unity. Watch Voice of the Global South with me, Akshay Dongre, only on DD India. You're watching DD India News Hour. I'm Mark Lin. Here's a recap of our main stories. The vibrant festival of colour signifying the change of season, the victory over evil. Holi is celebrated with a splash of colour and warm exchange of greetings across India and the world. Russia mourns the victims of a horrific Moscow concert hall terror attack. The national flag is lowered to half-mast on top of the Kremlin. Four suspects charged with terrorism are sent to pre-trial custody till May 22. And doctors in South Korea up the ante. Medical professors start resigning en masse. They are opposing a government decision to increase medical school admissions. Now, South Korean medical professors, they began submitting their resignations en masse to support uh, the trainee doctors' strike over a government plan to boost medical school admissions on Monday. The president of the Medical Professors Association of Korea, Kim Chang-soo, said that increasing medical school admissions will ruin medical school education, collapsing their country's healthcare system. Uh, Kim added that some professors will also start scaling back outpatient treatment to focus on emergency and severely ill patients. The trainee doctors have been on strike since February the 20th. And uh, DD India's Patrick Fork now joins us from uh, Hong Kong with an update on the story. Patrick, uh, uh, this is a little complex to understand. You know, an aging population obviously needs more doctors, not less. Uh, yet these doctors don't want any additions to their numbers. What's the core problem? What's the issue? Yeah, I mean, you could definitely say that the position of the doctors certainly uh, is complex because the government essentially wants to ease their burden by doing what it says it wants to do. And as we know, there is huge public support for increasing quotas for medical trainees. But doctors in South Korea say that this is going to, as we heard a moment ago, collapse South Korea's medical system. The basis for this argument is that they say, you know, the shortages that South Korea is experiencing are mainly in rural areas and increasing admissions simply means that a lot of newly recruited doctors from rural areas are going to end up moving to the capital and start offering non-essential services in things like dermatology and plastic surgery, uh, which isn't going to resolve the situation in any way and is only going to create more competition for them. But as we know, this debate, this protest movement has also been about uh, doctors wanting better pay and shorter working hours as well. So that does muddy the argument somewhat. And, you know, it begs the question, is this really about doctors strong arming the government to agree to their demands or are they making a fair argument? Either way, the latest developments with uh, senior doctors uh, now submitting their resignations shows that the medical industry has the backs of the junior doctors and that is going to make the whole situation a, a lot more difficult for the government to handle, particularly as it goes on. 
Yes, indeed. And uh, how seriously is uh, this affecting the healthcare sector and the mood of the nation uh, before that parliamentary election due next month? Well, reports suggest that the situation right now or the latest developments aren't making things any worse than they are because a lot of these doctors that are resigning are actually still continuing to work despite submitting their resignations. But the situation isn't getting better either. And the strike is now in its fifth week. And in terms of the mood, you know, despite this huge public support for what the government wants to do, there's also quite a large amount of dissatisfaction over how the government is handling the situation with the doctors. A Gallup poll showed 49% of people felt that the government was not doing a good job with the strike versus just 38% that say the government is doing a good job. And the concern, of course, for the government is that they've got parliamentary elections just around the corner and these ongoing disruptions aren't going to be a good thing for, uh, for ruling party candidates. We leave it there. Thank you very much. Patrick Falk for joining us from Hong Kong with the update. Uh, Crowds of supporters took to the streets in Senegal as they celebrated presidential candidate uh, Basiru Deaume Faye's probable win. Revelers gathered as supporters set off fireworks. They waved Senegalese flags and blew uh, some sort of trumpets. Now, the opposition parties declared Faye as an early winner following a peaceful day of voting on Sunday to elect Senegal's fifth president. This was after three years of unprecedented political turmoil that sparked violent anti-government protests. As unrest in uh, Haiti continues, clashes broke out between the national police and the armed groups on Friday, leaving a gang leader dead. The Haitian police, they have... Uh, launched a retaliatory operation as the Caribbean country has been gripped by violence since the rival gangs unleashed this wave of attack, uh, attacks one after another uh, this month. The, the conflict has killed thousands and has displaced hundreds of thousands, in fact, and peace justice officials, uh, they were seen on Friday recovering a dozen bodies which were charred, uh, people who were allegedly members of a gang, and burying them in a mass grave at a cemetery in Port-au-Prince. A hearing is being held in New York City today to determine uh, when one of Donald Trump's criminal cases will go to trial. The trial was expected to get underway this week, but a judge decided to delay the proceedings. Separately, the former president also faces a deadline to pay millions of dollars after a separate Manhattan judge found him liable of fraud. William Densilo reports from New York. Well, Monday is expected to be an incredibly busy day when it comes to Donald Trump's legal battles. If we first turn our attention to Donald Trump's hush money case, this could be the first of Donald Trump's four criminal cases he faces to go to trial. He faces 34 counts relating to allegations that he falsified business documents this case is tied to allegations that Donald Trump paid hush money to a porn star ahead of the 2016 presidential elections, charges Donald Trump has vehemently denied. Now, this case was expected to go to trial on March 25th, on Monday. However, a judge at the last minute delayed that by at least 30 days. This was because a tranche of documents was released by federal prosecutors, around 119,000 cases pages to be precise, most of which pertaining to an investigation into Donald Trump's one-time fixer, Michael Cohen, who is now expected to be the prosecution's key witness against the former president. Now, Donald Trump says uh, that this case should be dismissed. His team says that Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA, the district attorney, failed uh, when it comes to their obligations on discovery. They want to see this case tossed completely or at least substantially delayed. As far as the DA is concerned, well, he says that he's been asking for these federal documents uh, from federal investigators for months. He also says that on last review, only around 270 of those documents were relevant so far. All eyes will be on Judge Juan Machan to see when this trial will indeed, uh, well indeed this case will go 
to trial if indeed we do get to that point. Another key development expected later on Monday is a deadline for Donald Trump to pay what he is owed in a civil case when a judge ruled that Donald Trump was liable for fraud when it comes to allegations that he inflated the value of his assets to obtain favorable terms from lenders. Donald Trump faced a $355 million fine. Taking into account interest, though, that spikes to over $450 million. Donald Trump's team says that over 20 bond firms have rejected their advances. And essentially, the question is how Donald Trump will pay for this for this fine. On social media, Donald Trump says that the case has been a witch hunt and a scam. He says that he should he should be the one paid damages and not the other way around. So real question is, what could this mean to some of Donald Trump's most famous assets, things like his properties here in New York? Trump Tower, for example, such a prominent uh, part of the New York City skyline. A slight complication there, though, is the fact that Donald Trump doesn't own many of these properties that have his name on them outright. So that could mean seizing any of Trump's properties here in New York could be very complicated indeed. William Denslow in New York reporting for DD India. Simon Harris has been confirmed as the new leader of Ireland's uh, Fine Gael political party on Sunday and is now poised to become the country's next prime minister. Fine Gael party confirmed Harris's leadership following the resignation of the party leader and the uh, former prime minister Leo Varadkar on Wednesday. Harris was the only candidate to put his name forward in the nominations. 37-year-old Harris is best known for helping the country uh, during that initial response to COVID-19 and he will be voted in as Ireland's youngest ever Prime Minister when Parliament next sits on April 9, thanks to the support from coalition partners. Brazilian police arrested three people on Sunday, including a federal lawmaker, in connection with the 2018 murder of the Rio de Janeiro City Council member Marielle Franco and her driver, uh, João Chiquino Brazal, a businessman and current member of Brazil's lower house, his brother, a Rio Court of Auditors, advisor Domingos Brazal, and the former head of the Rio Civil Police, Rivaldo Barbosa, they had been taken into custody. Two former police officers were arrested a year after the crime. The Brazilian justice minister at a press conference in Brasilia said the crime was clearly political in nature and that investigative work on the case had concluded with the arrests. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un visited a tank unit for inspection on Sunday. Kim Jong-un also called for stepping up its combat readiness, including a greater ideological and mental power. During the visit, Kim was briefed by the division commander on its attack and defense operation plan reviewed documents and uh, provided the direction of operational combat missions and training for the troops. Here are some other stories making news from around the world. And Paris has revived its historic cafe waiters race after 13 years of hiatus on Sunday. And what this event does is it gathers around 200 waiters from various cafes across the city and they are tasked with carrying a tray with a croissant, a cup of coffee and a glass of water on it along a 1.2 mile route. The, it was first held in 1914 and the race had uh, not taken place since 2011 after organizers failed to find sponsors. And the Kennedy Center honored the comedian uh, Kevin Hart with the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor on Sunday with uh, an evening that featured routines from fellow comics in tribute to Hart's career. 44-year-old Hart became the 25th recipient of the prize. Now still to come here on DD India News Hour. Bhutan Royals arrive in Bangladesh to attend independence ceremony. Poles welcome the end of winter with a traditional cultural ritual.
welcome to Jaipur. You're watching DD India News. Huh? I'm Mark Lin. And the former Maldives president, Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh, criticized his successor, Mohamed Muizi, amid uh, strained ties with India, advising him to stop being stubborn. Saleh further urged Muizi to fix the relations with India amid the financial challenges faced by the Maldives. Now, the former president said that the government was deceiving the public and relaunching projects initiated by the previous government. He said that ministers were now lying to cover up those lies. Those uh, remarks, in fact, come shortly after Moisey asked India to provide debt relief for Maldives as the country is struggling financially to keep its economy afloat. Bhutan's King Jigme Kesar Namgyal Wangchuk arrived in Dhaka today to attend celebrations for Bangladesh's 54th Independence Day, which falls on March 26. The king was greeted by Bangladesh President Mohammed Shahabuddin on his arrival and attended a ceremonial welcome, accompanied by Queen Jetsun Pema, cabinet members and high-ranked government officials. The Bhutan king is visiting the South Asian neighbor after more than a decade also to strike several business deals with Dhaka. Polish families cheered as they burnt the effigy of Marzana, the ancient Slavic goddess of winter, marking the seasonal transition to spring at uh, an open-air archaeological museum in the Polish city of Sopot. Let's look at this report. Zimo. 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 Bye-bye winter, welcome spring, as the straw figure of the deity was set alight in Polish city of Sopot. This is how the tradition goes in Poland, to say goodbye to winter and welcome the spring season. The rituals involve burning the effigy to symbolically scare away the period of hunger and high death tolls associated with the harsh winters of the early Middle Ages. It is one of the oldest folk traditions in Poland associated with the goddess Marzanna. Marzanna, in ancient Slavic beliefs, was the goddess of death, of winter, cold, but also revival. As passing of the winter is passing of the grim period of hunger, of uh, highest death toll, and uh, by burning of the straw doll, we signify scaring away or attempt to scare away that period and begin anew. Marzana is the goddess of death in winter, but also of rebirth in the Slavic pantheon. It's a symbol of spring. We're making a little uh, Marzanas. Uh, it's a symbol of spring. So the white ones are uh, the winter and we're supposed to burn them <laughs> and the colorful ones uh, are the spring. The tradition has some similarity with India's Holika Dehan tradition, which involves the lighting of a fire after sunset. The fire signifies the burning of negativity and the triumph of good. While in Poland, people burn effigy of deity Marzano to celebrate the end of harsh winters and welcome pleasant spring. Bureau Report, DD India. Well, let's uh, get you all the latest uh, that's happening in India and in the run-up to the world's largest democratic exercise, the general elections of India. The dual interaction between geography and political decisions and the geographical structure of the election system, these are an essential part of elections in India. The vast topography and also the cultural diversity, it plays, these play a role, a major role in fact, in planning and the conduct of elections. Let's look at this report. India, the largest democracy in the world. 
Apart from sheer number of voters, there are many other factors that make the planning and conduct of elections a huge challenge. Geographical diversity, climatic conditions, socio-cultural diversity are addressed in the meticulous planning for elections by the Election Commission of India. A high grade of professionalism, continued innovation, technological integrations and strategic interventions come into play to ensure free, fair and credible elections in a country as vast and diverse as India. Due consideration is given to the topography and the ease of travel of voters. Along with this, the security management, religious festivals, harvesting season and climatic conditions also play a key role in finalizing the dates. Also, the commission keeps in mind the schedule of school exams as teachers are also deployed for election duties. The Election Commission of India has developed a number of tools such as vulnerability mapping deals with preventing voters from being influenced wrongfully in relation to exercise their right to vote. ECI manages the polling station, infrastructure and accessibility of voters as well. A set of rules under the assured minimum facilities take care of proper accessibility to the polling station. Braille facility in the EVMs, proper parking facilities, clean waiting sheds, etc. Force deployment plan along with outreach activities and voter awareness programs are also held to increase voter turnout to ensure smooth elections. The main aim of this mega exercise is to cater to the constitutional mandate and the premise, no voter to be left behind. Bureau Report, TD India. Well, Indian Navy's uh, Western Seaboard witnessed eight submarines operating together in a recently concluded exercise in the Arabian Sea, demonstrating their high levels of operation readiness. In a post on X, the Western Naval Command informed that uh, Vice Admiral Sanjay J. Singh embarked uh, the units at sea and reviewed the conduct of the exercise. Let's get you the sports news now. And uh, in the Indian Premier League, Royal Challengers Bangalore is going to lock horns with Punjab Kings in uh, Bengaluru today in the Chinnaswamy Stadium. RCB, they played uh, title holders Chennai Super Kings in the opening clash but were defeated. On the other hand, uh, the Punjab Kings, they clashed with uh, the Delhi Capitals and recorded a close four-wicket win. Now, RCB suffered a batting collapse. Uh, and were rescued by their lower order with uh, the pair of Anuj Rawat and Dinesh Karthik dragging them to a competitive total. The RCB skipper Faf Duplessis uh, made a rapid start before Mustafi Rehman struck twice uh, in an over uh, to trigger the collapse. Now Rajat Patidar, Glenn Maxwell failed to open uh, their accounts while Virat Kohli uh, looked a bit rusty as well. Uh, the Punjab Kings uh, made a better start to their uh, game, uh, limiting uh, Delhi Chargers, I beg your pardon, the, uh, the, the Delhi Capitals to uh, 174 for 9 before chasing it down in 19.2 overs despite a late stutter. And in yesterday's matches, well, Gujarat Titans uh, beat Mumbai Indians by 6 runs. In, the op in their opening IPL encounter, this happened in Ahmedabad in the massive Narendra Modi Stadium. Hardik Pandya led uh, Mumbai Indians, failed to break the uh, unwanted streak of losing uh, their first game in the Premier League season. Uh, so they lost again this time to Gujarat Titans. They were put into bat and uh, they scored, uh, uh, in fact, put into bat first. Gujarat Titans had scored 168 for six in their 20 overs. That looked like a very modest target. Uh, and Mumbai lost their way after Rohit Sharma's dismissal to end up with 162 for nine, uh, getting short of that run uh, of by six runs. And uh, Deval Brevis played a crucial knock uh, for the GT, uh, in fact, for Mumbai. But uh, GT Pacers managed to steal a win from the hosts, in fact, for the hosts. And Captain Sanju Samson uh, led from the front as uh, Rajasthan Royals bruised aside uh, 
uh, KL Rahul's Lucknow Super Giants by 20 runs in their IPL 2024 match on Sunday. Winning the toss, Rajasthan opted to bat first. Sanju Samson scored 82 runs of 52 balls. And uh, Rajasthan Royals hit 193 for four, which was a commanding total. And the Lucknow Super Giants uh, kept losing wickets at regular intervals. K. Rahul and Nicholas Puran stitched together a reasonable partnership. But uh, RR were able to restrict LSG to just 173 for six uh, for Lucknow. And Nicholas Puran had scored 64 not out. K. Rahul scored 58. Now, apart from that, Deepak Huda also scored 26 of 13 balls. But for R, R uh, Trent Bolt uh, scalped two wickets, while uh, Nandre Booger uh, and Yajuvendra Chehel and uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwar as well and Sandeep Sharma, they were among the wickets. Some uh, tennis news now. Well, the world uh, number one, uh, Swathik, has worked the night shift on Sunday at the Hard Rock Stadium, uh, but had trouble getting in gear before taming the Czech 26th seed, Linda Noskova, 6-7, 6-4, 6-4, to keep her bid for a second sunshine double, back-to-back -back wins at the Indian Wells and Miami Open on track. Now, Swatek was not at her best. The effort was enough to improve her season record of 22-2 and set up a meeting with the 14th seed Ekaterina Alexandrova in the round of 16. And that's all we have in this edition of DD India News Hub. But let's know your thoughts on the news of the day. Connect with us on Facebook, X, formerly Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. My name is Mark Lin. From all of us here, thanks very much for watching DD India News Hour. Namaskar. India that invents.